<clears throat> Good evening. Uh, I'm Matthew Spaulding, Vice President of American Studies here at the Heritage Foundation, and we are in for a real treat. Uh, here we are approaching an election, which pretends to be a watershed, recognized by both political parties as a turning point, a change debate about the role of government, free markets, the future trajectory of our nation. In that debate, campaign commercials and political rhetoric abound. Sound bites, daily reactions dominate the news cycle. But luckily for us, in the midst of all this, a very serious thinker has written a very serious book. Having been discovered by William F. Buckley, having grown up reading and writing for National Review, having overcome his education at Harvard University <laughs> and his upbringing in West Virginia, Charles Kessler is today a towering figure of the conservative movement, uh, rightly so. He is a professor of government at Claremont McKenna College. He's the co-editor with William F. Buckley of Keeping the Tablets, of Modern American Conservative Thought. He has written extensively on American constitutionalism and political ideas. Indeed, his edition of the Federalist Papers, the one published by Signet, is the best-selling edition in the United States. He contributes regularly to the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, Los Angeles Times, writes about contemporary politics in uh, the Policy Review, National Review, the Weekly Standard, among other journals. He is a senior fellow at the Claremont Institute, one of our closest think tank allies, which takes as its mission to restore the principles of the American founding. He is the intellectual muscle of that mission. He teaches in two of their key fellows programs, uh, the Publius Fellows Program and the Lincoln Fellows Program. Most important, he is the editor of the Claremont Review of Books, the quarterly publication of the Claremont Institute. Perhaps you are familiar with it, and if you are not familiar with it, I encourage you to be so, uh, and perhaps even to subscribe. It is by far the most eloquent, well-written, and, should I say, attractive reviews of books published in the United States today, and it is so because it is edited by Charles Kessler. He's been thinking, teaching, and writing quite eloquently about conservatism and liberalism for some time. Uh, and he has now done something very liberal, if not downright revolutionary, which is to say he's written a book largely based on President Obama's own writings, speeches, and interviews, and set out to understand and explain him as he understands and explains himself. As a result, he's come to the conclusion that it turns out that liberals don't understand President Obama and neither do conservatives. The result is the most serious and provocative assessment yet of modern American liberalism. I am the change, Barack Obama and the crisis of liberalism. Uh, this is a book that by its persuasive argument should and I believe will transform the left and the right's understanding of modern liberalism, how we look at its past, its present, and as we shall see, its future. So please join me in welcoming a dear friend of the Heritage Foundation, a dear friend of mine, and my teacher, Charles Kessler. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, they would have properly discounted your warm praise of me if you had mentioned you were my student at the very beginning <laughs> instead of at the end. But it is a, always a pleasure to be here. Um, Matt's uh, stewardship of the Simon Center for American Studies here has been stellar, and uh, its uh, heritage now speaks out on a variety of uh, philosophical as well as practical questions of the day uh, in a way uh, that uh, has changed the conversation in Washington. Uh, it's also uh, always an honor for me to be here uh, in, this, in the house that Ed built, Ed Fulner, uh, who is one of the great uh, figures of modern conservatism, and he really built this place. He did build it um, uh, from nothing uh, into, in, in, into the great empire that it is uh, today. And uh, I also uh, would send greetings to the other Ed, Ed Meese, uh, who is, certainly was one of the most effective attorney generals, attorneys general, I should say, of the United States in many, many 
years and who courageously launched really the whole movement for originalism uh, in constitutional law. Well, I'm here to say something about uh, the argument of this book, which as you can have heard is, uh, is called I Am the Change. And the title is, is uh, meant to bring out uh, President Obama's Louis XIV side. Uh, Louis XIV supposedly said, Les tas et moi, I am the state. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Obama came very close in a press conference to saying, I am the change. The, the title is actually from, it was the suggestion of uh, my editor and publisher. Um, I uh, had entertained another possibility, uh, which was, was actually suggested to me by my friend Bill Vogeli, namely, Barack Obama, what the hell were we thinking? <laughs> um, as opposed to some of my conservative colleagues uh, and friends, I don't think we get very far by labeling President Obama a socialist or by trying to trace his foreign origins or his secret Muslim devotions. Um, nor do I think even that we greatly illuminate things by focusing on him as a kind of third world ideologue, uh, as my old friend Dinesh D'Souza argues in his movie and in two books about Obama. <clears throat> I think it's fairer to begin, <clears throat> fairer and more useful in the end, excuse me, <clears throat> to begin by admitting that Obama is what he calls himself, <clears throat> namely a progressive or a liberal. Uh, and the rest of the title is on Barack Obama and the crisis of liberalism. I don't mean by this the kind of crisis that liberals like, which is the kind of national emergency that invites the expansion of government, uh, but rather crisis in the old-fashioned sense of a turning point. Uh, I think liberalism is approaching a, a moment, to use a word that President Obama does like, uh, in which it will either go out of business or become something much more radical uh, and uh, unlike its former self, or at least its best self. Obama is certainly, I think, the latest avatar of liberalism. He's up to his neck in its problems, uh, both fiscal and philosophical, as I'll argue uh, this afternoon. But first we have to sort of answer the question, what is liberalism? And uh, for many decades after the advent of this movement, um, the American Republic didn't know what had hit it. It took a while to try to figure out what modern American liberalism really was. Conservatives in particular have had difficulty defining their opponent in American politics. Some conservative intellectuals in the, from the very beginning of the movement in the 50s, let's say, 1950s, um, have thought, some have argued, that liberalism was a kind of emanation of medieval nominalism. That was Richard Weaver's contention. Or that it is a continuation of the French Revolution on American soil. That's uh, Russell Kirk and his school. Uh, or that it represented uh, the regimenting spirit of industrialization. The Southern agrarians and others took that as the essence of liberalism. Uh, Wilmore Kendall and Mel Bradford argued that the universalism of Lincoln and the anti-slavery cause was at the heart of the ideological bearing of modern liberalism. And of course, there was always a school that saw it as the work of Satan. <laughs> That's the church lady school. <laughs> but also, Wilmore, uh, but also uh, uh, Whitaker Chambers. Uh, to, uh, to a certain degree. Now, there, there may be some truth in several of these diagnoses, but I don't think any of them is adequate. On the other hand, liberals, too, I think, have had an unusual relationship with their own history and principles. Uh, if you look around at books written by liberals about liberalism, by Eric Alterman, to name one, but many others, you'll see that the favorite account of themselves now is that liberalism is really nothing more than, as President Obama said in his acceptance speech the other day, 
quoting FDR, liberalism is nothing but bold, persistent experimentation.